A lot of you parents out there are doing the bare minimum and I'm here to call you out. Because if you only knew how important your child's mental and emotional maturity was to who they become later on in life, if you knew how important that was, you'd be doing a much better job. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And as you might know by now, I have a mental health channel. And because this is a mental health channel, I gotta talk about a topic that is very, very important, which is childhood mental health. So something that I've recognized a lot in parents that I've met, parents that I know, parents that I've had, is something that I call bare minimum parenting. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's parents who are doing the bare minimum just to get by. And what does this mean? In crude terms, it means that you're pretty much doing just enough so CPS isn't called on you. So like, a question I ask myself as a father, like, what is a good parent, right? What, is, what does it mean to be a good parent? Because I see a lot of parents out there who want an award or a plaque because they're like, I work and I put a roof over this kid's head. I feed them, I clothe them, I buy them toys. And it's like, okay, congratulations, you're, you're doing the bare minimum. Like, that's really the bare minimum. Like, providing for the child that you gave birth to, the child who didn't send a request in to be born, that is the very bare minimum. So one of the reasons why I get kind of amped up about this topic is because as somebody who is a mental health advocate and somebody who tries to coach people on improving their mental health, like, I need to tell you that most mental health disorders are because of environment and not genetics, all right? There are many, many people out there who struggle with mental health issues, and it was purely based on their genetics. They happen to get a bad roll of the dice, but many mental illnesses are based on childhood and how the person was cared for. When it comes to mental health, 90% of it comes from nature not being as important as nurture. So it's very important that as parents, we do a lot more than just the bare minimum. Now, here's the reason why I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this because I don't know how old your child is, but I'm doing this to potentially help you out in the future because I don't want you to be confused. I see a lot of parents who are just extremely confused. I work at a drug and alcohol clinic. Okay, every single day I have people of all ages coming through my treatment center and when I sit there and I listen to their stories, I'm like, well, no wonder you became a drug addict, but parents are just so often confused and don't get it twisted. It doesn't even have to manifest into a drug addiction or alcohol uh, problem. Like it comes in a lot of different ways. Like there, are so, there is so much that falls on us as a parent. If your child grows up and they have abandonment issues in relationships, that is most likely your fault. If your child grows up and they have trust issues, that is most likely your fault. If your child grows up and they don't know how to build healthy relationships, that is most likely your fault. All of these things, all of these things that turn somebody into an adult, most of it is from what we teach them as a child. One of my meditation teachers said this, and it really just kind of, it just kind of clicked for me. When he found meditation, he said that, when you're born, when you're a child, when you're growing up, like nobody comes up to you and gives you an instruction manual for life and nobody warns you, nobody says, hey, you know what? Life is going to be really intense. And when he used that word intense, it just really clicked for me. Like life is intense, it is extremely intense. Like when you are a child, nobody explains to you like, hey, yo, you're gonna get these emotions and they're gonna feel like right a sock, like a sock in the stomach and it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be difficult. You're gonna have people in your life who are gonna hurt you and not be there for you. You're gonna have uh, a young man or woman break your heart. You're gonna have people let you down. Nobody explains these things to you. So as a child, it can be very, very difficult. But a lot of parents out there, we put this insane expectation on our children to just figure it out. One of my favorite things that parents say is, I need you to calm down. I need you to calm down. Like, real quick, empathetic role play. Let's put you in your child's shoes. Like, something that we often forget as parents is like, no child likes losing control of their emotions. No child wants to have an epic meltdown. We forget that. What I need you to understand here is, 
when your child is going through emotional difficulties as a child, they don't know how to turn it off. And one of the main reasons is because of brain development. This is what I was talking about in the intro of my video. Like, if you could understand how a child's brain actually developed, you would be a much better parent. So something I'm gonna explain to you right now, just basic childhood brain development, like 101, what you're looking at right now is a 3D graphic of the brain. So this part I'm showing you right now, this is part of the limbic system. Do you see how close it is to the brainstem? So the brainstem and the limbic system, these are the first parts of the brain to fully form. Imagine when your child was in the womb, this is the part of the brain that forms. This part of the brain is responsible for survival. It is a very, very emotional part of the brain. This part of the brain fully develops, fully develops 100% maturity before a child is even five years old. Now, let's rotate this thing. This part of the brain that I'm showing you is called the prefrontal cortex. This part of the brain is very complex, but it does not fully form until a person is in their mid 20s. Some of the aspects of this part of the brain that I'll explain to you right now are logical decision making and emotional regulation. So when you take into consideration that your child has a fully formed part of the brain that makes them run purely off emotions and they have an underdeveloped part of the brain that allows them to regulate th those emotions, you start to see that your child does not have the necessary tools to learn how to manage their emotions. So your child is experiencing very, very stormy waters. And as a parent, it is your responsibility, it is our responsibility to navigate our children through these stormy waters. Because if we don't do it, who else is gonna do it? The overcrowded public school system? No, they're busy worrying about, you know, tests and all these other things that they have to do and teachers have like 50 kids in a classroom. So who is teaching them how to navigate through their own emotions that they have absolutely no control over? That 100% falls on us as a parent. And if they don't learn it at a young age, guess what? They don't learn it at an older age either. As you've heard, as you've heard, it is hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I experience this every day when I'm working with the older population. And when I say older, like I'm talking about people who are just even 18 and up, trying to teach people how to relearn things, these are things that are embedded from them from childhood. That's why it's our responsibility to help mature our children emotionally. So some of you out there right now are asking yourself, well, Chris, like, how do I, how do I do better? What am I supposed to do to help my child navigate through these stormy waters? It takes time, it's a process. And trust me, I'm gonna make a lot more videos on this, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel because there are different ways that you can do this. But I will emphasize right now that the first thing you have to do is work on your mental health. Because if you are not mentally healthy, you can't lead your child to a mentally healthy life. That's like the blind leading the blind, all right? So remember, your mental health is extremely important when it comes to learning how to help your child manage their own mental health. All right, so I really hope this video got through to some of you. And if you are somebody out there who understands what I'm saying, do me a favor and please share this video out there because we have a lot of parents out there who are doing the bare minimum and then they're extremely confused when they get this rowdy teenager that they can't control because they're doing the bare minimum. All right, but anyways, if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing here, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, make sure you hit that little round subscribe button. Like I said, I'm gonna do more videos about parenting, childhood mental health, so you don't wanna miss any of that. And you can also click or tap on one of the thumbnails right there. Check out some other videos on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.